Hey there and welcome to another video in my functional programming in Python series. So in the last video, you saw how to take um, a piece of code that used the built in map function and to refactor it so it, uh, it works in a parallel processing fashion. So it gets executed in parallel, we're processing multiple records at the same time, and that can lead to huge speed ups in the execution time. And we did that using the multiprocessing module that's available in Python 2 and Python 3. Now, I already hinted at this in the previous video or towards the end of the previous video that there's other ways to implement parallel processing using a functional programming style in Python. So what I want to talk about in this video, what I want to show you in this video is how to use the concurrent module that's built into Python 3. So that's not available in Python 2, but um, it's kind of the nice and clean interface for doing parallel processing and parallel programming in Python 3. All right, so let's bring back the multiprocessing implementation for a second and just to run this example program again. So what you can see here is that, well, we're taking this input data set, we're generating this output here, and uh, this takes about two seconds to complete using multiprocessing. And we can see here based on our logging output that I set up that uh, the work is distributed across a bunch of different processes. So we have these four worker processes here that we can identify based on their process ID. And uh, they're working on these records in parallel. And then at the end, the multiprocessing pool reassembles all the results and gives us a list with all these um, derived, or, or I guess I call it transformed uh, dictionaries here that are based on the input data. All right, so let's replace this code with the concurrent.futures module. So this is the, the new and shiny way to do um, asynchronous computation in Python. It has uh, a clean interface for um, you working with process pools and also thread pools. And it's kind of cool. It's only available in Python 3. And um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how we can replace this multiprocessing code here with the uh, with code from the concurrent futures module. So um, let's just get this set up. So here I can go concurrent futures process pool executor. And this the, the way this interface works in the concurrent futures module is that you have these different classes that uh, are called executors. And they have their different execution strategies for how your code is run in parallel, whether that's across multiple processes or multiple threads within a single process. And they all follow the context manager protocol. So we can just enter this uh, executor here and then do stuff with it. Um, and then it, uh, it makes it very easy to do the cleanup here as well. So here I can just go result executor dot map. And again, you can see here the kind of the central importance of this map function as a parallel processing primitive. And I'm just going to pass it my transform function and my input data. And hopefully this is going to run. All right. And as you can see here, we're pretty much getting the same result uh, that we did get with the multiprocessing based implementation. Again, this is fanning out and it's running across four processes in parallel. It's doing the calculations here, the transforms in parallel, takes about two seconds to complete. And then we're getting this eater tools chain object. So this is maybe a small difference to what you've seen before, where multiprocessing uh, or uh, a multiprocessing pool dot map, it gives you a list of results, whereas this will give you uh, an iterator here. And so if I wanted to convert that back into a immutable data structure, I, I probably just call tuple on it. And again, you know, if you, maybe you want to go back to some of the previous videos to see uh, why I needed to do that. Um, because I explained it in I think that was the video on doing the map operation that's built into Python directly. So again, we're going to, you know, rerun this. And now we're getting the expected output because we're just converting, we're consuming this iterator, and turning it uh, into, into a tuple here with all these output elements, so we can print them nice and cleanly. So that was pretty easy to do. Uh, you may be wondering, okay, why should I use this thing here over multiprocessing or over a multiprocessing pool? Well, what's kind of nice is that 
the concurrent futures module, it provides a couple of different implementations that allow you to change very easily how your your computations are happening in parallel. So this was the process pool executor. And I can just swap out the word process for the word thread. And then we're going to get a different result here. So now you can see here that the thread pool executor actually performed all of these calculations within a single process spread out across multiple threads. And I mean, in this case, it's even faster, but this is just a toy example. It's not really doing anything. It's just sleeping for a second. But you can already see here that the big difference is that now everything is running within a single process. Parallel computation is happening because we have multiple threads within that single process that are working on this data in parallel. Now, of course, the question is, well, when should you use one over the other? So Python, kind of the dark secret of Python is uh, something called the global interpreter lock. And what it means basically is that no two threads can execute Python code at the same time. So even if you have multiple threads running in your Python program, they only one of them can execute at a time. Now, this sounds like a huge limitation. And in some cases it is, but um, really, what happens most of the time is that your thread will be waiting on IO to complete. So in this case, if I'm calling time.sleep, that's an IO operation uh, that's blocking this thread. And that means while that, that uh, time.sleep call is blocking this one thread, other threads can execute. And then at the end, uh, they, they, this thread will resume and they will all um, finish their processing. So in this case, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, however, if I if I was doing heavy number crunching in these threads, I would run into the global interpreter lock problem because they wouldn't, uh, the end result wouldn't really be faster than running a single threaded version. So there's lots more to say about this, but really what you need to remember is that the best way to get around this is to use process-based parallel programming in Python um, or process-based uh, parallelism. And this is where this concurrent futures module is extremely handy because, you know, see, I did it again. I just switched from uh, thread-based execution or thread-based parallelism to process-based parallelism. And this gets around the global interpreter lock problem because every single process has its own interpreter. Therefore, they can all run in parallel. You can actually spread them out across multiple CPU cores, and this solves the global interpreter lock problem. But this is definitely something that you need to keep in mind when you're writing parallel programs in Python. And this is also where this concurrent futures module is kind of nice because you can change the execution strategy very, very easily. And really, the process pool executor is just a wrapper around the multiprocessing pool. But um, if you're using this interface, it just becomes so simple to swap out the different execution strategies here. And now we're back to a thread pool executor again, and we're getting a different result. All right, again, only scratching the surface in this video, but uh, I hope it, it whetted your appetite for doing more parallel processing in Python, and to also do it in a functional programming style. Because I think one of the key advantages of functional programming is that it makes it very easy to parallelize your programs, right? If you can write your program in a way where um, it's using a map operation to transform some input data into some output data, or let's say if a part of your program can be written that way, it is extremely simple to parallelize this like crazy. You know, as you've seen here, all you need is you need to import concurrent futures and you need these two lines of code instead of a straight up map call that's built into Python. And your code is running in parallel. And this can lead to huge speed ups. This can be like a really quick win for a program that's IO bound or that's CPU bound. So highly recommended for any kind of number crunching that you do, or if it's um, a super IO bound program, like most web scrapers are, where you're waiting a long time for the web request to finish so that we can, we can parse out the data. This is extremely handy for those kinds of situations. And uh, I would encourage you to play with it and just get a better understanding of how this works and what the difference is between thread-based parallelism and process-based parallelism and how the global interpreter lock works in Python.
and hopefully I get a chance to do some more videos on those topics in the future. So click the subscribe button to make sure you're not missing those updates in the future and have fun playing with parallel programming in Python. All right, talk to you soon.